you know, we have this traditional energy system serving the consumer. Yep. And so we're trying to like actually integrate all this in traditional energy system to empower the consumer. So the, the big challenge, as I said from the start for us is how do we actually get access to the data so that we can put together this information and then the, the consumer can start making decisions and choices going forward. Digital Innovations in Oil and Gas. With me, Jeffrey Can, and on today's uh, episode, we're going to dig into the entire consumer energy experience. I don't know about you, but in my case, my ability to manage my personal energy consumption is really ch quite challenging. I have a hydro bill, I've got a gas bill, I got gasoline in my car, I'm gonna get an electric car soon. And this is creating a real hassle for the end consumer to try and sort through how best to manage their energy footprint as we all progress uh, down our trackway towards decarbonizing our broader uh, energy economy. And uh, I'm joined today by Mark Little, a entrepreneur who is setting out to transform the uh, consumer energy experience. Uh, Mark is the uh, CEO and uh, co-founder of a company called Jotson. Uh, Mark, welcome to uh, Digital Innovations in Oil and Gas. Yeah, thanks, Jeffrey, for having me. This is fun. So looking forward to it. Yeah, it should be a good good, good conversation. This is a big, a very, very big topic. Uh, but first, let's begin, though, with a bit of your uh, personal professional background. Uh, where, you know, which, what is your backstory and how did you end up uh, in uh, the, at the stage of your life focusing on this particular problem? Right. Well, it's, it's interesting. My, so originally when I went to university, I decided I would go into like hospitality, but I got enamored with computers and science and stuff. And so I ended up with a computer science degree and a business minor from the University of Calgary right. and joined the oil and gas industry right out of school. I was born and raised in Calgary, and this is actually where I joined the industry was in Calgary mm -hmm. and uh, worked for Imperial Oil for 24 years. And, and as part of that whole journey in understanding science, information and business, um, I had an opportunity very early in my career to actually work on what everybody believed was a systems problem and it ended up being a business issue ah. and so that actually opened the door for me to move from the computer side into the business side and then i literally spent like 35 years in the oil and gas business and my last role was at ceo of suncor and and through that journey i ended up doing my bachelor of applied petroleum engineering technology at sate and i also went to harvard and did the advanced management program so Lifelong learning, I think, is part of the journey. So it's been fun. Mark, why is it so hard for the consumer to get their head around all of this? Like, what, what are the barriers that make this uh, particularly frustrating for the consumer to get their arms around their own energy? Yeah, well, that's, that's actually a great question. That's kind of the essence of what we've thought about. I've, I've literally spent almost a decade thinking about this issue of, like, why is it that we can you know, put people on Mars and, or, or we can put equipment on Mars or people on the moon or sequence DNA, but the consumer can't understand their energy consumption. It seems crazy to me. Um, but the thing about it is like one of it is there's a massive amount of information in this system to run a complex system with the reliability that we have with kind of the infinite energy to the consumer. Uh, obviously there's lots of sensors and devices and information that are actually designed into the system but all of that information is oriented to the suppliers. So the companies get that information and, and then the consumer actually gets such a high level summary that and, and often not in real time. We have a property in BC and we literally get a bill every two months with essentially two data points on it. You know, what did you use last month? What did you use this month? And here's your electricity bill. So it's, it's like there's very, very little information that gets to the consumer. But that was designed to allow the system to be operated. This is just the way it was. And who would have thought with the internet and devices and all this kind of stuff, we, we now have the ability as consumers to consume this information or this data and turn it into information. So that's the first thing. Uh, and then there's four reasons why it's difficult for the consumer to actually understand what information they have. First of all, there is no energy company that's the integrator 
right? There's companies that are electric utilities, there's natural gas utilities, there's propane companies, there's gasoline companies, there's distillate companies. Uh, so there's all of these different fuel oil, whatever it is, and, and they're all running their own business. And so they're not integrating the data and nobody's basically operating across that entire yeah. platform. Yeah. So that's one. The second thing is that uh, multiple people in the household are buying. So my wife, when she goes to the gas station, she puts gasoline into her car. I put gasoline into my car. And it tends to be on the mobile side where we're kind of independently buying. Or if you have kids, they may be filling up a vehicle or whatever. So and it's not like we get home and have a meeting every night to find out, hey, did anybody buy energy today? What's going on? Submit your receipts. Blah. <laughs> like, thankfully, or I, I wouldn't be married. And uh, so and then the third thing about it is that there's so many costs that are actually embedded into the energy system. So when you get your bill, like you, you go and buy gasoline. If, you know, if you're in B.C., you can be pay like $1.68 a liter. It's kind of like, you know, there's a provincial fuel tax, there's a federal fuel tax, there's GST, there's carbon tax associated with it. There could be other fees in there. And you don't see any of it. You just know you're paying $1.68 a liter. So one of the things we do in our system is actually decompose the prices that you're paying. And then we can track, okay, what's the total carbon tax you're paying? Or where is all your taxes going to the province or the city or whatever it may be? And uh, so that that's another piece associated with it. And then the last piece uh, with this is that the consumer, if just to ensure that, you know, if they can overcome all the stuff that's embedded, if they can overcome uh, the challenges associated with no company being embedding the costs associated with it or multiple people buying, uh, we really confuse them when we sell every energy form in different units. Yeah. So we sell like gasoline and d diesel by uh, volume. We sell propane by weight. We sell electricity usually by power, kilowatts. Uh, when you get to natural gas, it could be sold like in Ontario. It's actually sold in dollars per meter cubed. In the West, it's often sold by dollars per gigajoule. So it could be an energy form. It could be a volume form. And the normal consumer doesn't know like, well, how many kilowatts are there in a liter of gasoline or how many gigajoules to a pound of propane? They they don't think like that. It's, it's a good thing because people would be like really weird personalities if they spent their time thinking about that stuff. So, so it's like, if you could solve the other four, this issue about confusion for the consumer, this, this is really complicated because this is just not something we do. So you literally would have to track all the data, do all the conversions, put together your entire picture to convert yeah. it from data to information. We do this automatically. Automatically. Yeah, and I, I have to say as a uh, uh, as uh, someone who's also been uh, up and down the energy value chain, I worked in power and utilities, mining, oil and gas, retail. Uh, there, uh, because it's um, the value chains themselves are structured independently, there's very, very few people who actually get to work across. And as right. a consequence, the the whole idea of transforming the retail, the, the consumer experience, uh, is a problem area that's never really been touched. Uh, I, I in my case, I know we've just finished doing a house renovation. We've installed a heat pump, and I'm, I'm saying to my wife, "How come the we should see some effect on the energy bill here, right?" And we we literally <laughs> don't know what effect we should see or have, and how to how to effectively manage it. And I think that's exactly where where uh, where you've headed. Let's just unpack the problem here. You know, why why is this such an area uh, that it warrants your uh, your attention now as a tech entrepreneur? Well, it's it's interesting, Jeffrey, because one of the things that we've learned in this is, in so many ways, we have like the envious and a fantastic energy system. Uh, certainly in North America, Australia, you know, Western Europe has a great energy system, but yeah. in recent years, we've seen the challenges associated with supply and demand there. They don't have the rich resources that we have in North America. So, yeah. but the, and, and so the thing about it is from the consumer's perspective, energy is almost infinite. It's super reliable. I, I mean, people are still talking about in Alberta as an example, where we had the threat of overloading the energy system. And, you know, they sent out a tweet and everybody took action. And, you know, this is something we talk about for the next three months. Yeah. It's that reliable. Just the thought that something might have happened is is newsworthy. Uh, and so, and it's safe. Like, you know, we hear very little issues associated with our 
our system. And on a global scale, the energy system is actually very low cost. And so this is the, you know, I think our energy system is the envy of the world in many ways. You know, if you went to Africa, people yeah. would just be like, wow, this has transformed the entire continent. Yeah. Um, but the challenge with it is, which actually blows my mind, is the fact that nobody knows really anything about their energy consumption. Like we can put assets on Mars and explore. We can put people on the moon. We've sequenced DNA. We've, we've done all of these amazing things, but we can't have the consumer understand their energy bill. <laughs> and, they, and so people don't know the most basic questions associated with their energy. They don't know whether they're getting more or less efficient. They don't know what their emissions are associated yeah. with it. They don't know what money they're paying and where all the money's going. The one thing that people intuitively say when we ask them about it is, oh, I'm spending more now than I did before. That's the one thing. But you know, households on average are spending 7% of their household income to buy direct energy. So electricity, natural gas, propane, um, fuel oil, gasoline, uh, diesel, those sorts of things. Yeah. And yet nobody really knows whether they're improving or getting worse, whether their emissions are going up or down, where all the money goes. So this is the challenge that we've set off is how do we transform this system to empower the consumer so that they can move from what I think today is basic information or basic data to information. And then from information, they get knowledge. From knowledge, they can seize control of their system and now start making a difference and they can optimize it over a period of time. Yeah. There, there are some who would say the, uh, the confusing terminology is actually intentional uh, by the energy companies precisely because it prevents the consumer from gaining the upper hand in, in visibility into what it is that they're purchasing. Is that, I, personally, it's a conspiracy argument in my view. I think it's just <laughs> the history. It, it was the, the businesses were designed to optimize the assets and the engineering behind the assets, not to really concern themselves with the consumer. Is that, how do you see that problem? I, I think it's just how we evolved. Yeah. I, I mean, you know that you go back four decades, natural gas was actually something that we thought was a nuisance or five, yeah. six decades. Yeah. We literally flared this up. We didn't even want it, it was a waste product. Yeah. Uh, so I think this is just, everybody approaches this from their window. Yeah. And in fact, there's some crazy stories. And, and in maybe the people that think that that is kind of a conspiracy theory, they, they'll be great customers of Johnson because we can provide transparency <laughs> and help them understand for sure. But. Um, but the thing that's really interesting about it is even people that are deep into the energy system and advising the consumer I often have no perspective about the energy system. Let me give you two examples. Uh, one is I was actually heard on the radio not that long ago that, that a company came out and said, hey, uh, for a household, if you replace the windows, you can save 60% of your energy cost for, for a family. I was like, 60, what are you talking about? Yeah, really? On average, space heating in, in homes, on average, statistically across our country, and I'm, this is where we've spent most of our attention. Yeah. You know, I, all these stats will be, I would expect similar in the US, but space heating is about 30% of a household uh, energy use, right? Space mm -hmm. heating. So how can changing your windows save 60% if on average it's 30%? <laughs> So so it's like, you know, it's not like you're going to replace windows and they send you cash to buy your other energy. So th yeah. this is like, I mean, to me, it's laughable. Um, the other thing about it is I saw a, a sophisticated electric utility that had on their website. They said, you know, to become more efficient and save the planet, use less electricity. And I was like, mm, you, you know, like there's people literally sitting beside you in the energy system saying to become more efficient and save the planet, use more, more electricity. electricity. Yeah. And, and I understood what they were saying. They just were locked into their perspective, right? Assuming that nothing changes, what they're saying is true. Yeah. If you can change things, which we clearly can in the energy system, what they're saying is like, seems crazy. So. It's, it's, and the consumer is getting bombarded with this information and it all conflicts, it doesn't yeah. make sense. And we're here to try and integrate the whole system and try and give sage advice and to empower the consumer. 
Well, the, the energy system is gigantic, of course, and we have the multiple energy products and they're being consumed by the, uh, by the, 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 the residential and uh, uh, homeowner in, in a variety of different ways. Um, this feels very much like trying to eat an elephant. Uh, you know, <laughs> so the way you eat an elephant, of course, is one bite at a time. You don't try and swallow the whole thing. Uh, so what bites are you taking off initially uh, to uh, try and uh, bring some sanity to this? Where, where are you starting out? Yeah. <laughs> so you're not talking about my weight loss goals. No, 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 no. I've done you a while, Mark, but uh, you, you never seem to change. So uh, let's, yeah, let's, exactly. we'll stick with, uh, we'll it, stick it, with the program here. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting, Jeffrey, because one of the things that we set out on originally was we were trying to figure out like, how do we eat this like one bite at a time? Yeah. And so we thought at one point we thought, oh, let's go into a fueling app and we'll try and get that all going. And then we'll add to it and add to it and add to it and evolve to this energy perspective. And uh, when we went out and talked to people that are deep in the tech sector and everything else, they're just going like, look, the world doesn't need another crazy app for fueling or yeah. something on the electrical side. Like the amount of companies that are focused on electricity and stuff is is incredible. Yeah. Um, but they're saying really the magic in what you're doing is integrating the entire system. So to some degree, I'd say we, we've decided that we're going to start eating the entire elephant all at once. We just celebrated at the start of this month, we celebrated our one year anniversary for Johnson. Oh, really? <laughs> and and we've spent the entire time basically trying to put together the entire integrated picture. So we have an app now that integrates all the pieces associated with it. Yeah. It has limited places where it can be used because we need to figure out how to read all the utility bills and write the code and everything else associated with it. Mm -hmm. But we have an app now, we have 70 households that are using the app. And our objective is to get uh, 500 by the end of June and 5,500 by the end of the year. So we need to 10 exit almost between now and uh, June and yeah. 10 exit again by the end of the year. But we're, we're making some great progress. And it's, it is a bit magical when people start instantly seeing their data and go, what? I have all these carbon emissions. Like, how did that happen? <laughs> yeah, I thought so, it was better than or, that. Yeah. yeah. Or they can start to understand how much carbon tax they're paying. They're kind of like, oh. I, you know, I wondered what what was going on. Yeah, and where where so the pilots you you have your your customer base is uh, starting to uh, starting to grow. Is it all in Alberta, or are you uh, outside of Alberta at this stage? Well, right now our focus is on Alberta, and yeah. so that's where we focus. And we basically uh, can deal with customers <laughs> that um, are getting their utilities from Adco. Any of the utility net, like utility yep. net has like 36 different marketing companies. So any of those we can actually handle. Nmax we can handle. Yep. Uh, our next stop is to actually work on the Epcor and some of the other big urban centers associated with it. Yeah. So we can actually uh, bring on any people that are dealing with those customers, but our focus is here. And then we've spent a lot of time working on Ontario. So we're hoping in the coming months here that we'll actually be able to turn on all of Ontario oh. at one time. Yeah, so we're, we're making some good progress there. And obviously that's a huge market. And so we're, we're in the process of doing that. And I think we're a couple of months away, but one thing that people will encourage them to do, we're just launching a new website. Mm -hmm. And when it's launched, you can actually go and sign up for early access you tell us your location and you tell us what utility you're working with. And then when we get to the point where we have enough with that utility, we can start to bring folks into uh, the app. Bring, so. the, bring the data on, yeah. Let the market yeah. drive and the uptake drive the integration uh, uh, right. of, of all of that that uh, original data. Uh, with the, um, uh, with the, the uh, changes that are going on in the marketplace uh, today, are customers telling you, uh, your early stage adopters, are they telling you that they've gotten some real surprises here? You mentioned that, you know, the one surprise was, I had no idea I was paying so much in carbon tax. What are the sorts of things they tell you when they, they realize and they get a chance to see the integrated data about energy? Well, we, we've heard all sorts of different stories. Some of them are like literally almost instantaneous. Uh, one of the individuals was just really surprised because they thought this carbon emissions thing was basically, you know, a, a government and industry issue and then suddenly realized the choices that they were making, what implications that had on the environment. That's one. Um, 
some people couldn't care less about that. They're focused on, hey, how do I save money here? And, and money is a little bit more complicated because you know, you're stuck in this data world that nobody understands. So as soon as you see the information, it's not like, you know, it's painfully obvious. It's like, well, if I just go change these two things in my home, boof, I save a whole ton of cash. Um, so it takes a bit of time. So we get, you know, we create this information resource yeah. and people can start to understand and they, they can understand what ratio of their total energy or their total expenses comes from one energy form versus another. So you can start setting priorities. If 50% of your energy is in fuel for your vehicle um, and 10% is in electricity, you probably shouldn't be working on the 10%, right? You should be trying to figure out like, wow, how do we deal with the 50% if we're trying to save money? Yeah. So these are some of the things that it gives some perspective where people can start to concentrate their effort. And then the whole focus that we have now is now that we've integrated you know, gone from data to information, and we're just rounding that out kind of for the first stage here. Yeah. Uh, and then you can start building analytical tools to help them understand what's going on, or you're getting less efficient, but you're getting less efficient in this particular area. And so then we can start to explore what's going on. And, and you know, the vast majority of consumers, the way they find out they have a problem with their furnace or their air conditioner or their heat pump or whatever it may be, is by getting job. a huge bill. Yeah. 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 <laughs> It, or it doesn't get, work. It's off, and then uh, right. Yeah, yeah. But it's when you or it totally bill. fails. But yeah. usually, before it totally fails, you're you get this massive yeah. inefficiency in your system. But the data is not there actually to tell you about that. So this is the journey we're on, and it's it's amazing. Like, it, and it's funny because a lot of people are just trying to solve like emissions or yep. whatever. Yep. Yep. Um, but when you go back and build the fundamental system that's underlying it, now the ideas that are coming out are just exploding. Yeah. And uh, so we're all about prioritizing, how are we gonna deal with all this? <laughs> yes, start eating the elephant. Uh, uh, with the, um, uh, with the, the journey that you're on, I'm sure you're encountering all kinds of uh, barriers and obstacles and challenges that are slowing you down. What are the sorts of things that you, you bump into that uh, make this problem uh, particularly uh, challenging to focus on? Well, I think you can appreciate that. So, you know, we have this traditional energy system serving the consumer. Yep. And so we're trying to like actually integrate all this in traditional energy system to empower the consumer. So the, the big challenge, as I said from the start for us, is how do we actually get access to the data so that we can put together this information and then the, the consumer can start making decisions and choices going forward? Yeah. And so, so a lot of times we've actually been out talking to people in the traditional energy world about, hey, you know, would you like to work with us and try and do this and transform the consumer experience? And, and you know, I would say you the entire spectrum of potential reactions we've seen in this entire thing. Some people just like, what are you talking about? Who wants the consumer to understand anything? Like, we're not giving you the data and we're not doing this. Um, through to some, I think, spectacularly innovative companies that are sitting in the realm of possibility going like, okay, actually this could be really good for our consumers. Yeah. And I can see, so how do we walk down that path and uh, we expect probably in the next few months to be making some announcements about some partnerships with some companies where we're actually talking about running some pilots mm -hmm. to see what this means to their consumers and get the feedback from their consumers so we can work in that journey. And I'm really excited that we're seeing, as, as always in that spectrum, you're gonna have people that are resistors or afraid of it, and others that are gonna kind of go, hey, I, I think this is great for the consumer. How do we make it great for us and find the win-win in this for the, you know, whether it's a utility or a fueler or a propane company or whoever it is that's playing in the energy system. What's the, uh, what's the commercial model here? That, is it subscription by the end consumer? Because after all, if they get the data and they can manage their energy footprint down, they'll get a savings that way. Or is it uh, energy companies who say, hey, we want our consumers to reduce their uh, energy demands because it means we can avoid having to expand or add uh, investing capital. There's value there, or is it energy savings companies who advertise? Like what? Where? Where? How does this venture kind of commercialize? <laughs> well, that's a great question. Um, 
part, part of what we're trying to explore is a variety of different avenues associated with this. You know, our hope was is that the utilities and the fuelers and stuff would plug into this and we could find a way of essentially financing the company through the supplier network because yeah. this is really good for the consumer. Um, and, and we are, like through some of these pilots, we, we are actually just funding our own side of this for the pilots and the companies are sp uh, funding their side. So we're gonna do some experimentation for that. But I actually think it would be like hugely advantageous to provide this capability to the consumer so that they're empowered to understand. And it's kind of like my view is, is that they're more apt to wanna shop with that company because they can get this experience essentially for free. Mm -hmm. when, when we go to Ontario, we're gonna try something a little different is our thinking at this stage. We're, we're literally gonna go to more of a subscription model. And, and when you go to subscription model, it's kind of like, look, we are totally unencumbered. We are fully away from every single company. Yeah. So now if your utility is actually providing you like a really bad deal, we can actually flag this to you and, and show you like, okay, there's some opportunities here and we see like costs in the market that are significantly less. We think you should be switching contracts and you can save a whole bunch of money associated with it. Okay. And, uh, and there's probably a middle ground between those two. Yeah. So we're gonna be testing as part of this journey, a few different commercial models associated with it. But you can imagine that like some of the analytical tools oh. are things like, oh, we know, we know oh, yeah. literally all your energy consumption. You know, where's the advocate for the consumer? And the beauty of it for us is we can see your information and before you can do the install and we can monitor it after and tell you, did you ever get paid out on your solar? Yeah. <laughs> did this, are you getting the results that you expected? Yeah. Nobody's doing this today. Yeah. People are, are manually have to do it if that's what they're trying to understand. Yeah, it's very, very frustrating uh, for the consumer. I, I uh, recall a, a driving experience I had recently on a Tesla that was left in valet mode, and I was unable to, uh, using the car, um, track my uh, energy usage. So I had to build, I was driving along, and this is in Nova Scotia, I'm driving along, and I had to build a little spreadsheet <laughs> on my tablet so I could track to know when I needed to stop in and get the car uh, recharged, right? And it was like, why am right. I doing this? This, should be, this shouldn't be uh, on me. Uh, imagine taking that experience and extending it to the, uh, the, to the, the whole of the household, right? Just uh, right. insane. Uh, you mentioned the, data, the analytic horsepower that comes from the data. Uh, so this uh, obviously will raise all kinds of questions people might have around privacy and security, et cetera. Uh, so how do you uh, how how are you uh, uh, tackling that particular uh, question that people might be raising? Are you are you getting your hands onto into data that that people might view as uh, somehow proprietary or sensitive? How do how do you tackle that? Yeah, I, I mean we have to have all the same privacy uh, yep. policies and such, which we do have to protect the consumer. I, our view is, is this is their data. Interestingly, the energy system doesn't think it's their data, or at least some people in that energy system. So it's one of the reasons that the company could have 10 times more and not tell the consumer. Ah. We're trying to get that information and provide it to the consumer, not just a dump of data, but in a way that they can are empowered and they understand and it drives their understanding and knowledge associated yeah. with it. If somebody mm -hmm. doesn't want us to use their data to refer them to somebody that can help them achieve something that they're wanting to achieve, that's their choice. That this is their issue. If they if they want to stop using the app, delete all the data and move on. So that that's the whole point because the this is about empowering the consumer, right? <laughs> Putting them in the driver's seat and letting them decide how this moves forward. Uh, like so many of the different apps that are out there, is the consumer has to agree and decide whether this is what they want. Yeah. Uh, data is going to be well. Of course, you have a background in data because, of course, you have a computer science uh, focus. So you can appreciate the uh, the the value that data now has, and why some companies would would uh, be much more reluctant to want to be as transparent with the, to the consumer. You did hint at um, one thing that's kind of triggered a thought in my mind. Given that you will have uh, the the aggregate energy consumption, will your analytics be able to help uh, a consumer, say, benchmark their particular costs relative to 
uh, other um, uh, people in their neighborhood or in their area so they can kind of see how they compare in that sense, you know, looking for, uh, say, energy leaks or uh, egregious use of energy. Th this is common in the water industry where uh, a leak in a All water right. system, you know, if, you, if you're leaking water, you, you can see how you're consuming relative to your, 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 uh, your neighbors. Can you do the same thing here with energy? Now, if the person doesn't want to share any of their data into the pool so that we can do averages and those sorts of things, we can't be taking other people's data and giving it to them. Yeah. Um, so we'll need to sort through some of that. But that, that's kind of the idea. And, and actually, some of the utilities do like, hey, this is a comparison to your neighbor. We, uh, the feedback we've received when we've gone and talked to the consumers is 80% of the people just totally dismiss it. Because it's kind of like, you know, we have a family of four. Our fan, you know, there's somebody home all day long doing work and all this stuff. I'm actually working from the home. My neighbor actually is a single person. They don't actually come home for like a week at a time. They're on the road. They're traveling for their work and all this kind of stuff. Of course, I'm using more energy. It's, it's like, no kidding. Or our house is twice the size. How's this relevant? One of the things, so we are looking to develop benchmarks around cost per square foot utilization of, of uh, energy and the distribution associated with it. But one of the most beneficial comparators is when you actually benefit, when you compare to yourself. And so you can see that it's kind of like, hey, we are getting better or yeah. we are getting yeah. worse yeah. 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 because it's the most relevant foundation <laughs> from which you to compare. So our first step is to actually allow you to start to understand these trends and adjust for temperature and those sorts of things. So you can start to understand are we going in the right direction here? Yeah. Um, or are we, you know, whatever that decision is by the family. Yeah, I think getting the baseline, uh, getting started, get the baseline, see what it looks like, run it for a while, get get some real data. That's when the d real decision making can start to um, have, have proper effect. Uh, let's turn to how this, um, you know, wh where do you see this going in the future? Like where, what is, uh, paint for me uh, how, uh, you know, wh where, what do you see as the, the, the arc of the possible with Johnson in the hands of millions of people? Well, one of the things we're working on, which we're really excited about, and technology is changing so quickly that to some degree we're bringing the industrial world into the household. We're bringing real-time monitors so we've actually been experimenting with real-time monitoring of energy sources coming into the home and then starting to learn, and there are some conventional technologies or, or, or existing technologies, I should say, that are out there that help you understand, okay, well, how much energy is my fridge consuming? It's kind of like, okay, perfect. But we're trying to do this on a macro sense with all the energy systems that you're having. So in real time, what, one of the things we're looking for is to actually spot inefficiencies where you start to see big energy consumers becoming a lot less efficient so that people can intervene and save the money versus wow. waiting until there's either a colossal failure. So the application of AI to the data set, and particularly when it's in real time, should drive real learnings associated with it. So AI is a key focus, not just for real time. We plan to do that in kind of the monthly data set as well but it, it will be less obvious in the monthly data set, just there's a lot less information, so it's harder yeah. to spot these trends. Yeah, I can see the power of it. We, as I mentioned earlier, I've, we finished a house renovation. Uh, this meant all new appliances coming in. Our, our energy consumption is now very, very confusing. We don't really know, have we, have we gotten better? Are we worse? We're just sort of sucking it up, frankly. Uh, and I feel like a lot of consumers will, will be like us, just sort of, yeah, you just take it and spend it and uh, hope for the best. Uh, and hope that's just not the right answer. Um, yeah. Mark, in your hey, view. Jeffrey, just before yeah. we move off this, like yeah. one other thing that I, I would say if I think about the future is like one of the things we're learning and, and I think you're seeing this in the new home industry as an example. People are building homes. We used to call them net zero homes. A lot of times now they're calling them net zero ready homes because to get energy efficiency, there's two pieces associated with it, the design of the system and how the system's designed yeah. and, and utilized. So, so you take the design of the system and the utilization of those two pieces together. And, and what you find is, oh, well, if you have a net zero home 
and it's like very well insulated so that you get high efficiency with your heating system, but you keep your windows open in the winter, it's kind of like, okay, well, that kind of defeats the design. Yeah. And, and so the whole point of this is I actually think so, and all these appliances that you would have bought would have an energy guide and show you the efficiency yeah. and where it fits on the scale of all the available models, those sorts of things. We, we actually hope that as time goes on here, we'll actually be able to come up with a Jotson score essentially for a household. And, and again, it's the combination, not just of the design of the assets and the assets you physically have, but also how you're using them and help you decide, like if you wanna change your Johnson score, then you know we can help you identify opportunities to be able to do that. So what we're hoping to do is go from these static enter guide stickers that go on various assets to now we can actually give you a sense of where you fit in that system. So not just benchmarking, but also how that fits into the whole yeah. the design and utilization, right? Yeah. And uh, this is one of the reasons it's complicated. Like somebody was saying to me, well, if you took a picture of a house with AI, we can estimate the square footage within 10%. And it's kind of like with energy, it's almost impossible because a lot of energy is unseen. Yeah. The things that, and, and often if it's never been right, it's really hard to detect <laughs> because you don't see it. Yeah. And so you you go on and just think, well, this is just the way it is. Yeah. And so much, much. Uh, there's so much promise here. It's uh, very exciting. Um, you've been uh, throughout your career. You, your, uh, if I could characterize it, uh, it would be uh, a first career, extended career in corporate world, very large organizations, Imperial Oil, Suncor, gigantic companies. Now you're in a small business with <laughs> I don't know how many people, but a handful. Um, what are the sorts of uh, insights you've you you've, you kind of can share with other entrepreneurs who might be, say, in a similar uh, similar to you in that they've they've gone through one life trajectory now they're on to a new one. What 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 advice would you pass on to someone like that? Well, I you know I think from my perspective I love being intellectually engaged and such, but it's been it's been kind of fun to get back to like okay I just go and make stuff happen and so it, you know in in my corporate roles you're literally trying to sort out like what's happening in the next you know year five years ten years twenty years with the company and plot this out some of this you will never see. Uh, some of these things take years and years and years to go from idea and decision to actually affecting change. So the the thing that's kind of exciting is to get to a little bit shorter cycle and uh, and see that effect. But I, I think some of it is that to some degree, we've basically received training our entire careers around everything from information systems, leadership, culture, relationships, suppliers, customers, those sorts of things. So I'm I'm looking to bring my entire history of learnings to the table associated with this. But you know, this is a totally different world than the world I've spent my career in. Uh, my daughter's actually an entrepreneur, so you know, I've gotten lots of guidance and teaching from my daughter, who's <laughs> been a successful entrepreneur for 15 years associated with it. But it's it's been a lot of fun, and you know, I, I went to the software as a service conference in Silicon Valley for the last couple of years. Yeah, you know, I almost need a little dictionary to find out like what in the world's going on? What is bootstrapping? Like I find out bootstrapping means like, oh, you're just writing the checks yourself. I was like, okay, we're bootstrapping. We're bootstrap, Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Um so you know it's it's a whole new world to learn about. And you know it's there's doors that will get open because of our previous relationships and our reputations. Yeah. There'll be doors that are closed because of our previous relationships and reputations and such. But you know it's it's all about understanding, being passionate about something and working to drive change. Um, and that's where we're at at Johnson. It's been a lot of fun. So anybody that's considering it, I would certainly encourage you to dip your toe in the water and give it a try. Give it a go. Um, Mark, thank you so much for coming on the uh, podcast today. It's been fascinating and I am looking very much uh, to becoming a Johnson customer um, sometime soon. Please, please come to BC. <laughs> we, need, yeah. we, need, we need Johnson here badly. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jeffrey. Appreciate it. All right, that's been another episode of Digital Innovations in Oil and Gas. Uh, if you like what you've seen, please press the like button and share this with your uh, community. Better yet, leave a comment uh, for Mark or I and we'll get back to you in short order. And I will return in a week's time with another episode. Bye for now.